ago on the lush tropical island of Puerto Rico, which rises out of the sparkling blue Caribbean Sea, there lived a man called Ote. Ote had a wife named Kaya and five children. The youngest child was called Chiquitin, which means the littlest one. Chiquitin and his family lived in the country in a simple house made of straw with a thatched roof. There were banana trees outside and a small garden of vegetables and flowers. Every morning, Kaya swept the clay yard. And Chiquitin gathered the hen's eggs. But he and his brothers and sisters did not eat the eggs. They were too precious. Instead, the eggs were traded for rice. And of course, no one ever ate the chickens because then there would not have been enough eggs to trade for rice. Chiquitin was just as glad. The chickens were his pets. Chiquitin also made friends with a little wild bird he called Reinita. She flew into the house every day and ate crumbs off the table. Reinita did not know how lucky she was to find even a few crumbs, for there was very little food for anybody. Because it was the dead season in the sugar cane fields, all the cane had been harvested, and Ote, Chiquitin's father, was out of work until spring. This meant that he had no money to buy food, so there was very little in the house to eat. One morning, Ote woke before sunrise. He had an idea which he could see in his mind. He would find the wild fruits of the forest, oranges, grapefruits, mangoes, and perhaps even guavas, and fill a sack. Then he would go down to the coast and trade this fruit with a fisherman for a string of fish to salt down for many meals. Light was just coming through the clouds above the mountains. Ote took his heavy walking stick and his big sack and headed for the forest. Gaia heard him leave and ran after him to stop him. What if you meet the awful nearsighted devil who lives in the forest? Ote, please, be careful. He plays such terrible tricks on people. But Ote simply laughed, partly to reassure Kaya, who looked so worried, and partly because he thought the idea of a nearsighted devil was pretty funny. He gave Kaya a hug, and away he went. He walked for many miles, up and over hills and down again into valleys, past waterfalls washing over rocks and along twisting mountain trails. The forest was thick with heavy roots, enormous ferns, and ancient vines that hung from tree to tree. Parrots squawked and screeched from above, and lizards ran up and down the tree trunks. At last, after many miles, Ote found some mangoes and began to fill his sack. As he worked, he listened to the raucous sounds of the parrots and the other familiar noises of the forest. Suddenly, he heard a strange crackling sound. He stopped picking mangoes and listened. Ote slowly turned around, and there, right before him in a clearing, seated on a rock, Ote saw the weirdest and most evil-looking creature he had ever seen. It had bat wings growing out of its shoulder blades and two sharp, pointed horns growing out of its forehead. The creature was roasting snails over a crackling fire. He was also clutching a large gourd full of steaming cornmeal and chunks of codfish. Ote could see by the way the creature stood up and groped towards the fire that he was almost blind. Ote gasped. <gasps> oh no, I can't believe my eyes. The near-sighted devil. Ote smelled the hot food. It made his mouth water. It smelled so good that Ote forgot his fear of the nearsighted devil and decided to try to outwit him and steal some of his food. Ote very quietly tiptoed over and stood behind the devil. First the creature took a handful of food and stuffed it in his mouth. Then Ote reached in the bowl and took a handful too. It was very tasty, and Ote quickly snatched another handful and another. Soon, there was just one piece of codfish left. Ote's fingers scraped the bottom of the gourd, and so did the devil's. The devil grabbed Ote's hand and held on very tightly. Ha! I've come. 
caught you. He hollered. You've been stealing my food. From now on, you will have to feed me. The devil scrambled up Ote's back and hung his feet over Ote's shoulders. The creature dug his claws into Ote's neck and said, Get moving. We're going to your house. I'm coming to live with you. Well, by the time Ote reached home, it was very dark, and the children couldn't see what was on his back. But their mother, Kaya, took one look and knew at once what was on Ote's back. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What have you brought us, she cried. The nearsighted devil. As she pushed the children away from the devil creature, she said, I tried to warn you not to go into the forest. Now look at what you've done. He'll never leave us. The devil hissed at Kaya and jumped off Ote's back. With a loud scream, he ran to a corner of the room, sat down, and went to sleep for the night. In the morning, when the sun came up, he was still there, sitting, watching, and growling. Gaia ignored him as she tried to prepare breakfast with what little food there was in the house. She set seven bowls of steaming rice on the table with a platter of fried bananas. Just as the family was about to sit down to eat, the devil suddenly sprang to his feet and cried out, Wife, husband, children, all fall down. Instantly, the whole family all tumbled to the floor and lay there as if in a, as if in a deep trance. Then, with a terrible leer and a growl of pleasure, the devil plunged at the food and ate it all up. When he had finished scraping all the bowls, he snapped his fingers and called out, Wife, husband, children, all get up! One by one, their eyes opened and they rose off the floor like puppets being pulled on strings. When the family sat down at the table again, they saw that the devil had eaten everything and there wasn't a bit of food left. When the little bird Reinita flew in the house as usual and hopped over the table, all she found was a single grain of rice. From then on, day in, day out, every meal was the same. Just as the family started to eat, the devil would jump up and put them under a spell. One morning, Kaya whispered to Ote, do you remember the wise old woman who lives across the stream? Go ask her for help. It's our only chance. Ote agreed and set out at once to find the old woman. Ote was so weak from hunger, and his legs were so wobbly that it took just about all the strength he had left to ford the swift stream that crossed his path. But at last he came to a little thatched hut. Through the window he could see an old woman stirring some soup around in a huge clay pot. The soup was blue. Ote had to beat upon the door for a long time, for she seemed to be deaf. Finally, the old woman came to the door and let him in. The whole story tumbled out before she had a chance to say a word. When Ote finished, he asked, What shall I do? We are all starving to death. Can you help us? The old woman shook her stirring stick and danced around the steaming soup, muttering strange words. Then she stopped suddenly and said to Ote, Go home at once, but do not eat anything before you get there. When you do get there, wait until the food is on the table ready to eat. Then, just before the devil speaks, shout these words. Tani pu, tani bi. The old woman would tell him no more, but shoot him out of the door with her stick. On the way back, Ote forded the stream again. He was extremely weak, so he sat down to rest. After a while, he looked about him. To his amazement, he was in the middle of a grove of guava trees. Before he knew what he was doing, he bit into a green fruit, and then another and another until he had eaten most of the sour green guavas that he could reach. When he stumbled through the doorway of his house, dinner was on the table. The devil was just settling down to eat. 
or Ted banged his fist on the table. He tried to open his mouth to shout, but he forgot the magic words the wise old woman had told him to say. While he was struggling to speak, the devil cried out, Wife, husband, children, all fall down. And they all fell to the floor once again and lay there as if dead. When he finished, he woke them up again, and they saw there was nothing left for them to eat, and nothing, of course, for Reinita either. By now, the littlest child, Chiquitín, seemed smaller than ever. Little as he was, though, he was very clever. It was he who kept the chickens hidden so the devil would not eat them. Kaya, his mother, looked so miserable that Chiquitín longed to do something about it. After a great deal of thought, he said to her, Mama, please send Father to see the wise old woman again. I'm sure she will help us. And fix a good dinner, because tonight we will all eat well. He looked so serious that Kaya did exactly as he said and spoke to Ote. Ote agreed to leave at once. When Ote started out on his journey, Chiquitín ran up the path and hid out of sight behind a tree. As soon as Ote passed, Chiquitín crept out and silently followed close on his father's heels. When they forded the stream, Chiquitín was nearly carried away by the swift current, but he managed to get across and catch up with his father. As Ote was coming through the forest, he met the wise old woman. She was breaking up a piece of bamboo for a new stirring stick. Chiquitín quickly hid. She was so wise, she guessed why Ote had returned. So she grabbed his arm and said in a loud voice, Listen carefully this time. Do exactly as I tell you. Go home at once. Do not eat anything on the way. Once you get there and are ready to eat, remember to shout, Tamni Pu, Tamni Bi. And you must do this before the devil knocks you down. Then she vanished. Chiquitín, of course, heard everything and said over and over, Tamni Pu, Tamni Bi. He kept repeating the words again and again as he followed his father home. He said them even when an iguana charged across his path and made him jump. On the way home, Chiquitín saw his father become weak and staggering under the strange spell of the devil. Ote stopped and began to eat the green fruit of the guava trees. Chiquitín just kept saying the words, Tamni Pu, Tamni Bi. Meanwhile, Gaia had made a great dish of all that was left in the house to eat. It was a magnificent dinner, like a holiday celebration. She decorated the steaming platters with herbs and spices and put them on the table. The children laid fresh flowers on the table. Just as Ote came in the house, the devil smelled the rich aroma of food and scrambled to the table. Quick as a flash, Chiquitín dashed out from behind his father and shouted, Damni Pu, Damni Bi. There was a terrible howl of rage from the devil and he shot upwards and engulfed by black smoke which swirled out the door and through the air. Then the devil spiraled down toward the hard clay yard and hit it. With such force, he went through it with a loud explosion. There was nothing left of the devil except a crater in the clay yard. Black smoke came up from it and a horrible smell of sulfur filled the air. Then at last, the family sat down to dinner for the first time in weeks. They kept passing the platters and filling their bowls again and again until they were stuffed. It was the best dinner Kaya had ever made, an absolute feast, even for Reinita. And all this was thanks to the littlest one, Chiquitín, for he had defeated the devil. <laughs>